Hey everyone, Sheila here from Life of Pets. So today we're going to do an all our tanks update. It's been a while since we've done one of these and we have had a lot of changes in the last few months and many of you have been asking do we still have this fish, do we still have that fish and where is everybody now because of all the changes and some of the new tanks that we've set up. So today I'm going to show you all the tanks and what fish are in each tank. So I'm going to start with our 10 gallon divided tank. Currently we only have the one bait of fish in here and that is Theo. He is our old guy. He is approximately three years old. He doesn't have a roommate right now. All we have in the tank are some of the cherry shrimp and then we do have just a few uh, snails in here as well but for the most part this tank basically takes care of itself uh, with it being so heavily planted then we don't actually have to do a great deal in this tank just the regular water changes and trimming of the plants from time to time so the next tank is our 75 gallon tank and this one is basically our community tank. We do have a puffer fish in here, we have the South American puffers, we have a couple of bala sharks, we have about seven of the denison barbs, we have several of the pictus catfish which I think you can see one of them just right there. We do also have a clown pleco in here but it's very rare that we see that guy and then we have the harlequin rasboras as well and we have one little guppy left that was one that uh, we did actually sell all our guppies but this was one that we kept just because it was a much older female so on this tank i'm actually going to feed them right now that's what they're all hanging around waiting for uh, this tank we usually feed uh, pellet food one day and then we will do the frozen food the next day. We do do quite a wide variety of frozen food for this tank so that we meet all the needs of the fish actually in here. This tank I did actually used to feed twice a day but we've actually just been doing it once a day and the fish all seem to be thriving on that so we have actually stuck with that routine for this tank. Now the amount of food that I've actually just put in now is about probably about half what we would normally do but uh, for this video I didn't want to sort of put the whole lot in because I will feed them again later on today just so that they get their full quota of food. Since adding the bala sharks into here, they have already grown quite a bit from when we actually first got them. So that is a good sign that things are good in this tank. And again, it doesn't take that much maintenance for this tank. Uh, we usually do about a 40 to 50% water change uh, once a week, and that just keeps everything where it needs to be. We do also have our snail graveyard in here because obviously the puffer fish do eat snails. And so periodically we do go through and clear that out. We do have a large nerite snail here that has never been bothered by the puffer fish and then we also have another one over there. That one's actually a rather large horned nerite. They don't seem to bother with those at all. Uh, some of the ram's horns they, they allow to live in here for a certain amount of time. In fact I actually see one on the back wall over there and but over time they will actually eventually eat them it's actually really good for them to have some in here that do what i call escape and then that way it gives them the opportunity to then spend some time to hunt all right so let's move on to the next tank so the next tank i'm not going to spend too much time on because i have shown it quite a lot in the last few weeks this is our snail breeding grow out tank uh, this is where we have the babies. I don't usually put them into a breeder box. However, these babies I am hoping are gonna be purples and magentas. And so I just wanted to see if that was the case. So that's why there's a breeder box floating in here. And then also you can see through the lid there, we do actually have another two clutches. And I do also think that they're from our magenta and purple tank as well. This tank also does have a lot of shrimp in it. The shrimp explosion in this tank is absolutely crazy and the growth of this plant is just amazing. It literally grows inches by the day. We started off with uh, just like a little twig like that one at the bottom there 
and this is the re result of approximately about three weeks growth so it has just exploded but then there's a lot of snails in here so obviously there is a lot of fertilizer by the waste because there's no fertilizer in this tank whatsoever it is all growing by the nutrients in the water and then also by the waste produced by the snails so you can see we do have a lot of snails in this tank uh, some of these are already sold and each week we do send out an awful lot so I do think that uh, these won't be here for much longer. The little tiny white specks, they are ivory mystery snails and the bigger ones, the, these are actually about six, seven weeks old. So we've got many different sort of age ranges in here and when they sort of grow to the bigger size in there, that's when we actually go about selling them. So moving on, we then next to that tank have our 20 gallon planted tank and this one has some of the rummy nose tetras in it also has some harlequins and then jasmine is in this tank as well so i'm just going to stick some food on this one and then hopefully we can get uh there we go we can get a good look at them this food's absolutely great because they go crazy for it but it also means you can get some really up close shots as well so jasmine's still not too sure by this food yet i don't think she's fully oh there we go there we go she's realized it's food yeah this food is great because it will also bits will drop down as well and then it will also feed the shrimp that we have in this tank we do have a lot of shrimp in here as well this tank has a uh, crypts in which this one is a crypt wenty a lot of people always ask us about our crypts because they're so large that one is a crypt wenty and then we also have moss balls in here and guppy grass that's predominantly the plants in this tank and i do really like this tank again it's really really easy to take care of all i have to do on it are water changes once a week jasmine has actually just been added to this tank now everybody is doing really well so the next tank is our 20 gallon long goldfish tank and it has our goldfish belfin in it who everybody loves and belfin absolutely loves the camera as well so he just loves everybody this tank, again, fairly easy to take care of. I do do two water changes a week on this one, and in fact, it is actually due a water change. But he, but Belfin has been with us now for two and a half years, or he is two and a half years old. He's been with us a little over two years. So as I have recently done a setup video on this tank, again, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. I will leave links in the description box below uh, for anything that you see in the tanks if you want to go and take a look at them I will also leave links in the little top icon for videos that you might want to go and watch on Belfin's tank We do actually have like little lily pads on the top of the tank I don't know whether you can see them there and he absolutely loves these he goes and sits under them he almost plays soccer or football with them because he pushes them around his tank as well he's so funny to watch with these lily pads and i do think that they sort of do add a nice touch to the tank so our last tank is the 20 gallon long breeding tank for our snails a lot of people were asking why we didn't have the water level all the way up but that is simply because the snails need to be able to get out of the water and so we have to have the water level lower so that they can come out of the water to lay the eggs in this tank we have our beta fish blaze and we do also have some cories which you can see down at the back there and then we do have a synodontus decorus catfish who we don't usually ever see or very rarely see and i think he is back in this corner somewhere but i'm not quite sure if you will be able to see him so this tank right now is a little cloudy and that is because i have just fed them an awful lot of food and so sometimes it will cloud the water depending on what i'm feeding i do also have the lily pads in here and blaze does love to sit underneath them um, i think that sometimes beta fish just really like to get out of the light 
and so these lily pads do actually make a great shade over a tank if you don't want high light in a tank and there's somewhere where the beta fish can rest as well and as you can see a snail has chosen to rest under that one we do actually sell those on our website and i will leave a link to them in the description box below all right guys that's it for this video i hope that made sense so that you can now see where all the fish are and what fish we have got we have unfortunately lost several beta fish over the last few months due to the issues with the water that we were having and so right now we currently have three left we are looking for another one for the other side of the divided tank and until i sort of find something that i really like then obviously i'm not going to get something so now i'm actually on this side of belfin's tank i can give you a better view of the lilies that we have on the top obviously these are fake they're not real ones but they just look so so good on the top of the tank because we don't have a lid on his tank and so we have these floating and they do look very very pretty all right guys well thanks for watching if you're not subscribed to this channel and would like to see more videos like this then please do so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time